Viewer discretion is advised. So, I guess I can talk a little bit about what I did over the holidays. Um, let me shift before I blow my engine up. I, uh, you know, spent time with my brother. He came out earlier than I expected, which was really nice. So, I was able to spend time with him. You know, I went over to family's houses, saw cousins and aunts and uncles and stuff like that. Grandparents and... It was a lot of fun. It was it was definitely, you know, something that is nice because there's, you know, certain family that you, you only see once a year. Um, so it's nice to see them. Holy breaks. I got a red light ticket. Okay, well, since I already got a red light ticket, let's just run it. I was in the breaks, too. Pretty hard. So, yeah, I mean, uh, one of the, you know, Christmas and everything um, was really nice. And uh, I was able to... Uh, my family got me uh, a really nice set of Miata gauges, which is something that I've been wanting for a while, which was very nice. Um, I went ahead and installed them, and they look amazing. You can see that on my Instagram if you're interested. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it was uh, it was really nice. I was able to spend time with. I actually spent a lot of time with Polcat, uh, my buddy Danny, um, who is kind of. Danny is like a brother that lives in the same state <laughs> because my brother you know he lives out of state so I only, I only get to see him once a year and it's really nice when I do get to see him I mean we played some games on my PlayStation we played uh we tried to find split screen games which that's pretty much impossible nowadays uh we ended up playing Little Big Planet 3 which was actually a lot of fun it wasn't that bad uh the end boss battle fuck that if, I, if you've played Little Big Planet 3, you probably know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, the end boss battle is just a bitch. It's just, it's really aggravating. Um, and then we played Surgeant Simulator, which you play two separate hands. One person's the right hand, the other person's the left. That was a lot of fun. Um, so, I mean, we, we do have fun. And I, I wish we, that could happen more often, but he does live on the other side of the country, so... It is what it is, but Danny is kind of like my my brother that is here. You know, we, we get along and we have very similar interests. And, you know, if I if Danny wasn't around, I probably wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that I do to my car. He's he's always there to kind of help me out. And, uh, you know, being friends with Polecat and being friends with Danny, that was two separate groups of people. You know how you kind of have like, this is a set of group of friends and this is a different set of group of friends. Well. Eventually they met because Danny, you know, watches my videos and stuff. And um, I've known him before I started YouTubing. So uh, he eventually started watching the videos and, uh, you know, knew of Polecat. And then I mentioned to him one day, oh, I'm hanging out with Polecat uh, because me and Polecat live relatively close. Not like next door, but, the, you know, not a ridiculous distance apart. So we hang out occasionally, and uh, just one day, you know, Polecat and Danny met and, you know, became good friends. And uh, so now the three of us kind of hang out. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. I mean, we, we were able to, you know, once my brother left town and I was, you know, spent as much time as I could with him, I kind of got together with Danny and Polecat and we worked on cars. We uh, worked on my Miata a little bit, but we mainly worked on Polecat's Crown Vic. Just trying to do some of the things that have been needing, that have been, you know, needed to be done. Uh, let's get fuel, get some diesel, um, which was a lot of fun. You know, it's always some about working on cars is just really therapeutic. You can just sit there, and even though you you can run into some problems, um, and you can kind of get aggravated, um, it's still a lot of fun. It's still therapeutic, so. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed it. We were able to just kind of hang out, have fun, and, um, you know, we, we pulled a ton of wires out of Polecat's Crown Vic from when they, when he bought it. The police department did a terrible deinstallation of it, and just pretty much just threw cables wherever. 
um, or just left them in the place. So we went through and removed, oh man, that was probably a good 40 pounds of wire. I mean, it was a lot. Polecat's actually saving the bag of wire, actually the three bags of wire that we've built up, um, so he can weigh it at the end and see how much wire was just sitting in there. So, unfortunately though, we kind of run, ran into a little problem with his car after cutting a ton of wires. Um, for some reason, the airbag light came on, so we're assuming at some point in time an airbag wire was cut. Um, not the end of the world, car still starts, car still runs fine everything works uh the only thing is that after like 30 seconds of it being on it beeps 25 times because <laughs> it's throwing a code 52 uh any mechanics out there i know i have a lot of truck mechanics that watch this um so if anybody knows crown victoria airbag code 52 um let me know if you have any suggestions on how to troubleshoot that or where we could look we've already looked at fuses we've already looked at wiring the problem with the wiring is it's just very whoever did a wiring job was very bad at what they were doing it was just cables on cables in cables different colored cables like it would a cable would go from like a red to a white to an orange and you're just like what it's the same cable different gauge wire and we're just like this is just whoever did the installation on that police car back in 2006 wow so, we've tried to do a couple trouble troubleshooting things. Uh, unfortunately, the code checker, the OBD2 sensor, uh, did not register when we plugged it into the car. It w there was nothing popping up on it. So, we checked fuses, wires, I mean, all that sort of... So, we're not really sure what exactly it is. But if anybody has any suggestions, let me know for sure. I mean, I'm open. Um, but... Yeah, it, I mean, it was a lot of fun working on his car, pulling a ton of cables out and everything, and, you know, just being able to spend some time with, with friends, and, you know, it, it was just definitely what I needed. I just needed to be able to kind of relax and just get away, so it was it was definitely nice. And, um, yeah, over the, uh, over the break, we painted the, uh, well, we primered. Holy breaks. We, uh, we primered the, um, the hood and trunk on the Miata, uh, getting it ready for something special. I don't want to mention too much about it, but, um, the, the reason why we primered only the hood and the trunk, which some people on Instagram were not, were like, wait, you're only painting the hood and trunk? What's going on? I'm not really saying what I'm doing. I might've mentioned it in the past, but if I have, I'm not going to mention it anymore. Um, but we do have a plan for the Miata, but the thing is, it needs a smooth surface. So the color, what I can tell you is the color is changing on the Miata. I can tell you that. It's not going to be the color that it is. Um, well, right now it's about three different colors, so eventually it'll be one nice color. Um, wow, that person just changed into this lane to change back. Um, so, but what we needed to do was we needed to make sure that we had a smooth surface for in the future and to do and the hood and the trunk were in just really really bad shape it was um it was to the point where the previous owner when i had bought it had bought cans of spray paint and had just so the the hood because it's a 20 year old car um and it's a miata and mazda put like really low end paint on the car to begin with so you add bad paint to begin with on top of what is going on with everybody changing lanes so you put bad paint on top of 20 years it's not going to be pretty and then the previous owner had bought spray paint and just had spray painted the the hood just went out there didn't mask didn't do it in a non-windy environment didn't bother sanding back the oxidization of you know the initial problem that they were trying to cover up just went out there with some spray paint and just spray painted it and just went and just didn't bother doing any sort of type of coverage or lines or any sort of paint method literally just held the spray can in the spots that they thought was going to be good enough so there's literally there was literally just batches of spray paint that was just sitting in certain spots um, because they were like, that looks better. No, it looks fucking terrible. I would much rather have a 
oxidized hood and trunk compared to what looks like somebody tried to fix it and just did the world's shittest job at fixing it. Like, it was terrible. So, instead of just trying to sand it back, we just decided, hey, let we went and got a little shitty, like, 30 buck electrical sander like it really you know a little, just a little sander um and we uh we just sanded the thing down we just this is a very bumpy road um we just sanded the the whole trunk and hood down and then on the front bumper and the rear bumper i hand sanded it because it's not metal i don't want to take something like an electric sander to not metal i don't want to cause any problems with that so i took a hand sander so I pretty much just went around to the whole car and just smooth and smoothed out any paint imper- imperfections. And then we decided because there's bare metal exposed on the hood and trunk, um, I didn't sand down the bumpers enough to have anything exposed. But on the hood and trunk, you know, bare metal, especially with the weather around here with the rain, it's, we didn't want it to rust and stuff like that. So we just decided to primer it for now. We're going to go back and wet sand it soon. Um, so that way we can have a nice, very smooth finish. So, you know, it was, uh, it, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it didn't take that long, really. The Miata is so small. It's just so easy to do something like that, like painting the sanding. Okay, sanding, uh, prepping, painting probably took about four hours. It was really not that long. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, that's the stuff that I really enjoy doing. It's very therapeutic to be able to do something like that so um yeah just you know we're doing a lot with that car um so hopefully sometime this year is all my goal really is just sometime this year it'll be one single color and that color i'm not saying as of yet i'm keeping it a secret i think i i, ha- I think i have mentioned it in the past and if you know what it is then that's fine um because i wasn't holding it i wasn't gonna keep it a secret but I think it's getting to the point now where it's getting close that I want to keep it a secret. I want to do the big reveal when it's done. So, you know, and, uh, you know, we're we're continuing to work on Polecat's car and taking care of little issues here and there. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice. Nice to be able to kind of wrench on your own things and not have to worry about like, you know, am I going to break this or whatever? It's, it's, it's good to have for me, I'm very fortunate enough that I can own two vehicles. Um, I mean, I never once in my life thought I would ever own two vehicles. I used to look at people that own two vehicles and go, wow, like, that's crazy. Um, I never thought I would be in that situation, and I'm extremely fortunate to be able to to be there. Um, But it's nice that I have my Crown Vic that is practically done. The thing just operates it just works it has ever since the day i bought it it just does the job the only thing i had to do was make it one solid color because i got that ticket um other than that brakes oil change that's about it it the thing just goes um so it's nice having a nice reliable car and then also having a project car that hey if it spends a weekend on jack stands it's not that big of a deal or if for whatever reason this happens it's not that big of a deal like when I got the gauges for Christmas, you straight up have to perform surgery on your gauge cluster. Like I was wearing rubber gloves for like six hours. <laughs> it wasn't really six hours, but I was wearing rubber gloves for like probably three hours. I was, you know, you can't touch the gauges with these gauges that they make. They're matte. And if your oil, the finger, the oil on your fingers, if you touch it, that's there forever. And I was also messing with glass uh, because the new gauge face cluster that I got has I got new anti-reflective glass for it which is night and day difference holy shit um and you you know obviously if you're going to touch the inside of that glass that's going to be you can't clean that unless you take the face off which is a pain to do so I was being like super careful literally performing surgery on this thing and just you know being able to little tiny screws and all these crazy little you know you gotta and then you have to cut plastic like a lot of plastic out of the gauge cluster excuse me which is a very scary thing I'll say that right now it's pretty freaky um and then you have to uh cut some circuits which is even scarier um you don't have to but the kit I got I got a 
light rewire kit so it moves some dash indicator lights into some better positions like the ones that you actually use. For some reason a 95 Mazda Miata has a low wiper fluid light. Why I would need that up in the front and center in my face all the time, I don't know. But so that rewires that somewhere else and it makes it so the light for the headlights going up and down, which is in my opinion more important than low windshield wiper fluid. Um, you know, it, uh, it, it moves those around and it switches like your airbag and ABS light and stuff like that. So, you know, you were pretty much performing surgery on this thing, but it was actually really nice. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if anybody owns Miatas out there, but if you do, I would definitely check out uh, Rev Limiter, which is where they got the gauges. Um, the guy makes some really, really nice gauges tons of different styles mine is kind of like a retro like airplane that's called warbird is the set that i got um it's like an airplane set and then i have like this retro face on it which looks really cool um so if you if you have a miata definitely check out rev limiter i mean the guy also includes like very step-by-step -step instructions on on how to do it i mean i literally was just on his site just step by step and i did it and i didn't mess up which was actually kind of surprising that i was able to get through that and not mess anything up there's also going to be about seventy-five thousand kids that walk past my window now so you're probably going to hear them yell <laughs> just fyi if you hear something in the background that's what's happening because uh all kids can do nowadays is yell and i don't know just be loud as shit past like a ton of windows that people live in but whatever I'm just a grumpy old man. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I'm just grumpy. <laughs> so. Yep. They're pushing a shopping cart and yelling at each other. So. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, I was loud as a kid. Who's not loud as a kid? But I also understood that if I was walking by houses or an apartment complex or... Something where there's people, lots of people. I was a little bit quieter than if I was like in a park or somewhere where there wasn't much, you know, kind of places where they are used to a lot of noise. So, I don't know, just me. Um, very quickly, let's do an update on our uh, trip real quick. So, we're still hauling 17 tons of cheese. That hasn't changed, thankfully. That would be scary if it did. Uh, we got 5% damage on the truck now just wear and tear zero percent on the trailer which is good uh but we currently only have 1300 kilometers to go which is really nice so 21 hours so we actually did almost half the journey we're probably going to stop here when we get around a thousand uh because i'm actually starting to get pretty hungry um and i want to eat something uh so yeah we're, we're doing pretty good uh 1300 kilometers we were at 2000 so we've already gone you know 700 kilometers almost 700 kilometers which is pretty nice um and we haven't messed up the truck that much so it's pretty good um we'll just kind of keep trucking along here for a little bit more oh god that sounded like a helicopter for a second kind of sounds like a helicopter like flying overhead um but yeah so we're gonna keep trucking on here for a little bit and then we will uh We'll probably do another episode and then stop there so I can get something to eat because I'm just all of a sudden, boom, hunger. Out of nowhere. 